Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hey, what is the single stupidest thing that you have ever done? Now, you may be having a list of things run through your mind right now and trying to pick one, or you may know exactly what that single stupidest thing you ever did is. Uh, here's the next question. Did anyone find out about it? Because I know a lot of you from my generation are really thankful that social media wasn't around when we grew up because most of our stupid things are not recorded for everybody to see forever and ever on YouTube or Facebook. Um, well, David's big mistake is saved in the Bible for everyone to know about. I mean, and people have been talking about his big mistake for probably close to 3,000 years uh, if, as they've been reading the Bible and reading uh, 2 Samuel as it was written. So uh, in case you don't know, if you're the only person on the planet who doesn't know the story of David and Bathsheba, here it is. David decides to goof off, and instead of going to war with the troops, he stays back in Jerusalem, and he happens to be on his rooftop checking out women, sort of like the ancient version of porn, and, uh, and he sees Bathsheba bathing on her rooftop, uh, and he sends for her. And by the way, she really couldn't refuse. He's the king. I don't know if she wanted to go, was excited about going, or like, felt like she had to go, but she goes to the king. David sleeps with her, and uh, he thinks, okay, I, I had my fling. I'll send her back home. Well, guess what? She ends up pregnant. So David sends for Bathsheba's husband, who happens to be David's friend, Uriah, Uriah is one of David's mighty men. He's been faithful to David, serving David, fighting with David for years. And David sends for Uriah and says, come home, go home and sleep with your wife. And Uriah has too much honor. He's like, I can't go home and sleep with my wife while my troops are struggling in the field. So he sleeps on the doorstep of the palace. And so David's like, ah, rats, he's not going to you know, cover it up by sleeping with his wife. So then he writes a secret note to the, his general, Joab, and he, he sends it back. And Uriah delivers his own death notice to Joab because David instructs Joab to send Uriah into battle and then pull everybody back. So uh, he sacrifices Uriah in the battle. So that's exactly what happens. Uriah goes up and he's fighting and then everybody withdraws and uh, Uriah is killed. So David uh, sleeps with his friend's wife, gets her pregnant, and then has his friend murdered. And he thinks he's gotten away with it. Uh, with Uriah being gone, David brings Bathsheba into his palace. He marries her as his wife. And, uh, and he thinks, great, nobody knows, cover up complete, only it isn't. By the way, here's the thing. None of us ever get away with it. Okay, God sees what's going on. And, and scripture says some men's sins precede them to judgment, others follow after. But guess what? Nobody gets away with it. We're all going to give an account to God. We will reap what we sow. Like, that's important. We will reap what we sow. Just be aware of that. See, David faced consequences. First of all, uh, he was rebuked. You'll hear about that tomorrow. Uh, secondly, there was turmoil in his family that is directly related to this. God's judgment on David allowed his own son to rebel and to overthrow his kingdom, which we'll get to in a few days. And then David suffered dishonor and pain in front of the entire nation because of this. All of that because of David's disobedience. And yet, here's the big yet, God forgave David. You know why God forgave David? Because when he was confronted with his sin, he confessed and he repented. He confessed and he repented. You know, the Apostle John said, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we confess and repent. And the takeaway for this is simply this. David sinned big time, but there was grace for King David. And there is grace for you. I don't know what your sins are. I do know that you're a sinner. But I do know this. God loves you, and he will forgive you. Uh, he paid for your sins in the sacrifice of Jesus, and he wants to restore you and bless you if you also will confess and repent and follow Jesus. And I hope that's what you hear, and I hope that's how you'll live because then it will really bless you. God bless. Have a great day.